Let's give this a whirl. <laughs> oh my god. Look good? Alrighty, you wanna start us off, Rick? Yeah, I guess. So today we're talking about the FX9 here that we recently picked up about a few months ago. And it kind of like our pros and cons and overall first impressions of the camera. We're coming from using a lot of hybrid DSLR and mirrorless cameras. I started with like a Canon T3i. I know you started with like a Sony a6000. Yep. And so growing up to this point, there are a lot of like shortfalls and also pros to using those types of cameras. And our most recent camera is the Panasonic S1H. So that's kind of our perspective of where we're coming from, how we're looking at this. The first and most obvious difference between a cinema camera, or they really refer to this as like an ENG style camera, which is electronic news gathering, and a mirrorless camera is obviously the physical differences. It's much larger, it's heavier, it's more designed to be used on either your shoulder or kind of rigged up for a film set. And that's kind of the direction that our business was heading in, where you're usually working in teams, it's multiple people operating the camera, and I think that's kind of really helped inspire our decision to switch to this style of system um, because there are a lot of advantages to the mirrorless and hybrid cameras that the FX9 actually lacks. So the one thing that really stood out to me about the FX9 is the shoulder mount system and how it makes it a lot easier for run and gun shooting. Yeah, it definitely sped things up for us a lot. No, now when we go on shoots, we don't necessarily have to bring a gimbal or a tripod. We can get great handheld footage. You kind of can with the S1H because it has really good internal image stabilization but it's a little awkward to shoot with and it's usually not the best for what we're doing. But now that we have uh, this style of camera, we've found ourselves to do a lot more handheld shooting, a lot more shooting off of the tripod, which has really freed us. So we're getting more variety of shots, different types of shots, faster shots. I mean, one of my other things that stood out to me about the FX9 is all the, are all the buttons on the side and all the buttons just around the outside of the camera so that you spend less time digging through the menu. And that's one of the pros, I guess, about the camera is all the external buttons that make it a lot easier for like just again run and gun shooting. Yeah, it was, really, it was really difficult for us at first because we were so used to the S1H and we had it all set up to how we wanted it and how we used it. But after a couple of weeks with the FX9 and setting up some of those custom buttons and really learning the new menu layout, it's gotten a lot easier, but it was really a daunting task at first. Like I remember going into the menus, I didn't even know how to set up certain things that on the S1H was just like a click of a button for me. Yeah, I guess another thing I like a lot is the viewfinder here, how there's a little, a little eyepiece and then that lifts up and there's actually a really nice monitor that you can look at like while you're shooting and stuff, which is very helpful. Yeah, that's something we never had before. We always were staring at the tiny LCD screen. Like right now, we're not even using an external monitor. We're just looking at the little LCD on the side of the <laughs> screen, which isn't quite reliable. You can't really tell focus even when it punches in one-to-one. -one. So having a, a pretty decent screen, but also the viewfinder on top of that, not only helps you make sure things are in focus, but it also allows you to really see the entire image, see all the information. And my favorite part about it is it really helps you to stabilize the camera when, you're, when you are using it on your shoulder. You can kind of use it as like a third point of contact. So you have your shoulder, your arm, or your hand, and then your eye, which really helps stabilize the camera. My favorite shooting style, I guess, to use the camera in is when we're doing an interview. So we usually have the S1H on a tripod for kind of like the main safety angle, and then we have the FX9 as a handheld angle. And it's really nice because when you have it handheld, there's still a little bit of shake, but it's steady enough that it doesn't look bad because of the shoulder mount system. And because of the eyepiece, you can always see very clearly what's in focus, what's in frame, and it's very helpful. Yeah, I agree. It's definitely given us a different look of look and feel to like some of the footage we've gotten, which I really like. I don't think it's anything we could have really obtained with S1H. We tried to do something similar previously with using a gimbal, but it usually came out really static and fluid, which was nice, but for certain situations, you want to have that little bit of shake or, you know, uh, handheld feel so you can really tell that somebody's operating the camera and it kind of breaks down that barrier for the viewer. One of the physical aspects about the camera that we haven't really taken full advantage of, but we've already come to realize that it's really useful, are all of the extra inputs, both for video and audio. So having full size, two full size XLR inputs has been very helpful because if you're running multiple channels of audio, you can run it all straight into the camera. When you go into your editor, then you don't really have to worry about creating audio from an external device. So I guess one other thing, going back to like the physical design of the camera, one other thing that we were really taken back by is the ability to customize the camera and set up certain custom buttons. 
Um, and it has things like a gain switch and white balance switch so that when you're changing environments, you can the camera has a memory, so it will go back to those settings, which has really improved our workflow on set. Because this way now, if we're shooting on two different locations and we have two different settings for uh, separate locations, they're already pre-saved in the camera. We can just flip back and forth from set to set. Also something we knew we would love is the variable ND filter that's built into the camera. Uh, we have to use variable ND all the time on our S1H. We have one on there right now to block out light. And it's really become more of an artistic tool for us. We like to control uh, a lot of light in the environment with the ND filters. So having it built into the camera and not having to worry about, oh, did I forget the ND filter? Let's go back to the studio and get an ND filter. Um, it's really a huge improvement to our workflow. And I think that's something that we were, were really happy to see. The first main thing that we really were surprised about was how bad the battery life is on the battery it comes with. It just comes with the little BPU-35 batteries and it really lasts much less than an hour. Um, I think it says it's supposed to last an hour, but that's not just an hour of recording. It's like if the camera's on, the battery's just draining, which I'm not used to, because with like our S1H or our previous A7S, which is known for having bad battery life, the camera wouldn't use as much battery when it wasn't recording. It was just, if you were recording, you'd, you'd get an hour of recording. And on shoots, it's hard because when even when we're hand-holding the FX9, we always have to find a power source because we know the battery will not last for the even for the duration of the interview that we're doing. So even just the other day, I was hand-holding it, and halfway through, the battery was dying. So we had, to, we had to stop, we had to plug it into power and everything, and it was kind of a pain. Okay, so one of the biggest and most recent things that we found to become a major problem with FX9 is the fact that the viewfinder cord right there gets stuck, and it's actually gotten stuck for quite a while now. It's a few been, days. Yeah, it's been a couple days, and we haven't been able to get it off. We don't really want to pull on it. Um, I looked it up and there was some information about this happening with the FS7. People said you can kind of wiggle it out. And I was able to get it out once and then it got stuck again. So now we're just like, might as well just leave it in. But yeah. it, it's a real, real major flaw that I guess is a common thing that's happening to people. So, okay, so one major and very obvious disadvantage is the price of this camera, um, especially compared to a lot of the other available options that are similar, like the FX6, the A7S3, S1H are all half the price. Um, so it's a huge investment and it's really, in generally I probably would not recommend, unless you know you're, you're dead set on FX9, I probably wouldn't recommend investing that much money into a camera. We were very fortunate we were able to get a really good deal on it, so that was kind of why we went down this road. Okay, so another thing that I see as a drawback that maybe other people don't, um, this is just from me coming from the S1H and uh, other mirrorless cameras, is the fact that a lot of the resolutions and recording options aren't available in different codecs, which is really weird to me. I thought that you could shoot 4K 60, um, 4096 by 2160 in various codecs, but it's only in the all I or the intraframe codec, which is kind of a pain in the butt because with the S1H, we could shoot 4096 by 2160 at 60p um, with no problem in, in any codec we want, or well, I think it's just the inner frame codec that's available. But anyways, it's a lot a lot less data that we have to deal with because um, it's more heavily compressed. Where with the FX9, if we want to shoot 60p, it's automatically inner frame. So we're burning through cards um, and these cards are really expensive. So, okay, so yeah, I guess that's it. Um, These are very brief first impressions of the FX9 that we've had for about two months now. And we're just starting to use it on commercial jobs, getting used to it. Yeah, so thanks for listening to us uh, ramble about this thing. Um, but hopefully that gave you some insight into what it's like owning this camera, our, our first impressions of yeah. the camera. As always, thanks for watching and be on the lookout for the FX9 and S1H review where we do a more in-depth dive on both of the cameras.